All right, what I'm working on now is a sheath for this old Bowie knife. And the customer that was asking me for this sheath wants something that's angled, you know, pretty dramatically on his belt, as if it's like it's just the belt. He wants it something like that, or you know, even more so. Um, so I was going back and forth with different sheets I made, and I showed him this one that I made a while back that has uh, this belt loop that wraps all the way around so it can be ambidextrous. And he decided he really liked this, so he wants something like this one, only this knife's going to be a little different because it's got, of course, a guard on it, which always complicates things. But the same general idea. So I've drawn up a pattern, and I'm going to get started on it. Um, it's going to be what I refer to as a sandwich style sheet where you've got uh, basically three layers. You've got a spacer piece between two outer layers. And then I'm going to have a piece that this is only half of it. This is going to be mirrored. Uh, that's going to attach to the front that will, um, well, front and back, that will fold over and become the uh, belt loop of it. The balance point of the knife falls right about here. So kind of right between these rivets. And it'll hang right as long as that balance point is below the belt loop. So you always have to pay attention to where your balance point is anytime you're going to angle a knife sheath uh, and make sure that that balance point is the point where you're trying to angle it from. Now for a nice quick knife sheath like this, I'm just going to use a remnant of, this is a double shoulder. Um, and I'm going to avoid a little bit of the wigglies on the edge here. Uh, where there's wrinkles. I'll just let that go in my scrap bin. Probably today. These will be holes for rivets that I want to mark in here. And then like I said, we'll flop it over and trace the other side of it. Kind of a standard rule of any design. If you ever want to make anything symmetrical, only design half of it. And then we're going to need a couple pieces of this. Same way, one right side up, one flipped over. And you want to avoid any temptation to put stuff um, at weird angles just to get it to fit as best as possible in the space you got uh, because that'll make the leather twist. It either needs to be straight with the backbone of the hide or straight against the backbone of the hide. All right, we need one more piece that's going to be our spacer piece. And for that, I don't need to use the best part of the hide, so I'm going to jump on down to the other end of it here where I have a chunk that I can just call good enough. Base piece is going to run up to the guard. Oh, need to go through there. And then I'm going to use little points by poking through the pattern piece with the awl. Another reason to use a scratch hole instead of a pin for marking patterns.
Now, on a couple of these scraps, I want to cut some spacer pieces to go on either side of the blade. Uh, basically, they're going to fit, the knife's going to slide down into the sheath, and then this is going to kind of fit up against the guard. Um, so we've got the thickness of our leather is going to be on the outside of it to make something that's going to fold down. And we're going to have this sort of negative space in there. And I want to go ahead and put something in there. So we're just going to go ahead and take our, well, we'll take this piece. And we'll draw just a few inches, maybe an inch or so, inch and a half, up to the guard and across the blade. And down. So I'd say we need to actually drop the one end a little bit. So I need two of these, basically. And they're going to skive on this back side. All right, let's do a little bit of skiving here. Let's go ahead and take the ends of these down so that our pieces that are overlapping there taper in nicely. Then when we have it overlapped, it'll smooth down nice and neat. And do the same thing on this side of it. And then the hard piece to sky is going to be this one. I'm going to move it down to my ed edge of my table to do this. Because I want these to sky off as well. All right, now let's go ahead and do some stitching grooves. I should have done these before. I can use these to attach this on here. I don't necessarily need to go right up to where the rivet holes are going to be. Let's peek into the ribbon holes. Might as well punch those now, too. So I'm just going to use them to kind of index everything. This piece, line up our rivet holes, tells us where it needs to be. And the same on this piece. This piece I've marked a line where this is going to cover. And I'm just going to use that as I don't want to put a stitching groove behind it. to edge beveling. Right around the top of this I'm going to bevel the edges on the back side of each piece. And 
the front as well. Not necessarily right where it's overlapped, but not overlap very much. So we're going to go ahead and continue to just wrap all the way around the front. And the same with this piece, it's going to be our belt loop. We're going to bevel the edges where they're not skived on the back. edges on the front. Now just like I did on my previous sheet, I'm going to mark this top spot because I'm going to do some stamping up on the part that becomes the belt loop. But I'm also going to do some stamping on the front pieces, which I didn't do before. But I think I can get away with it once I got this marked where it's going to be covered up. I'm just using a wing divider to mark in ooh, about three eighths of an inch in from the edge. Where I can do some stamping. A little careful down here where I've got it. Sky is too thin. I don't want to uh, run into that. And I don't want to get too close in where this rivet's going to be. So I'm going to wrap up and around. The rivet's probably going to just cover the edge of that. And then we're going to do the same thing here. Draw our lines up. Almost to that real faint line I have there. And then we'll just kind of parallel that line for a bit. Alright, this is supposed to be a companion piece to a holster I recently made, which had the square basket weave pattern on it. So I'm going to be doing the same thing again. Um, I've got my marble slab underneath this cutting board. It's a little noisier to work on the cutting board, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, let's lay out our line to follow. And then this stamping tool is pretty simple. Uh, you just kind of nudge it up against that line, and then it'll work into the impressions of the other stamping tools. And you just turn it 90 degrees each time. And you kind of feel the other impression. And make sure it's on the line and eventually it just starts to fit in right where it needs to be. Mm, I'm going to have to move this cutting board. Now, as usual with any sort of basket weave pattern, I'm going to use a, um, a border stamp. Looks sort of like a camouflager with an extra little crescent in it. To go around the edge. Which is what that line marked with the uh, wing divider is actually far. Where the I'll go over this a little bit with one of these uh, glass burnishing blocks just to smooth everything out and sort of round it all out a bit. Well, now I just have to do the same thing to the other pieces.
All right, let's see about getting some dye and finish on these pieces. Uh, if there's any weird noises, it's because there's a dog currently under my table. She decided that that's a good place to take a nap. These spacer pieces, I'm just going to kind of mark the edges of them. The last of them is going to be basically hidden. Uh, it will be inside the sheet though, so I'll, I'll do the smooth side just in case. That's the grain surface of the leather. For people that know the actual leather working terms. Alright, and then as usual, one of my favorites, acrylic resin for a finish. Okay, let's go ahead and finish up some of these edges on some of these pieces. It'll be harder to get to later. And then we can start gluing everything together. And as usual with the edges, I'm just going to... Use gum drag and slick it with a wooden slicker. Alright, now a little bit of order of operations before I put this all together. Um, these pieces are going to have to be sewn on first before I can glue everything together. So I'm probably going to go down to the sewing machine, stitch both of these on, and then we'll come back up and we'll put it together with all the pieces that go inside. And I'll use these um, rivet holes to index it all together. So I'm going to grab a couple rivets to do that uh, while I am stitching. And I'm planning on using these big copper rivets for this one. The reason for that is, um, first off, I think it'll look good. And second, um, it's going to be basically what holds the whole top of the sheet together because when I stitch the rest of the sheet together, I'm probably only going to go up to here and leave a little bit of it swinging in the breeze up there. So next step will be using a couple of these. Like I said, it index everything while I stitch it together. these rivets out while we got just make it easier to stitch kind of like using straight pins when you're sewing cloth just pull them out before you get them stuck in your machine. The only problem with these copper rivets is this totally flat head um, with this tapered back on it. So it kind of sticks up a little bit or uh, you can have edges stick out if you're not careful. But something to dress them up a bit is to take your setter for them and then just kind of tilt it around a little bit and roll it around as you hit it. And turn that rivet some as you go. And you can kind of dome that rivet a little bit, kind of roll those edges down. And 
let's glue these pieces as we go. got some glue on it. Let's go ahead and slide that on there. Stick it down in place. Let's go ahead and rough up our Welch slash spacer piece, depending on which terminology you're using. Set the rivets through. Get everything lined up and stuck down. A bit more glue. piece and then our final upper pieces Now I just got to throw some stitching around the edges here and grind and finish up these edges. It's already, it fits good. Okay, not entirely happy with the way some of it turned out, but I'm going to go ahead and finish up the stitching on it. And we'll go ahead and or finish up the edges on it, and we'll go ahead and get it taken out back to the customer. Uh, things I don't like. This side I managed to get this to line up perfect. This side somehow I managed to get them off. Um, they don't line up down the line like they're supposed to. Uh, I think that's because... I went from just one side of this and it's not going to work. I think I'd have to have it not come together right up here or something. But anyway, um, and then 
the stitching is a little bit off. Like I got an extra stitch there that I didn't want. And I missed a stitch here that I should have gotten. You know, little things. But I'm going to go ahead and finish it up and see what the customer thinks of it. I think he'll be fine with it. If not, I make another. <laughs>